Hello and welcome to a new video about pronetics. We are still talking about valves. Still about wave valves. We talked about 3-2 wave valve. Today, 3-2 wave valve. But different type of operation, okay? Up to now we had rod operation. Now we do something else. I had tried again to, to draw it a little bit, yeah, to give you an impression how this should look like inside. Like I said, no construction should show the principle, okay? So here we have it, look. From the outside, there's a one connector, there's a three connector, and we already see a one, two connector. Mm -hmm. So it should give you already a hint what it means. And here we have a two connector and a little tiny hole. Mm -hmm. And basically, that's it. Mm -hmm. So this is what we've got here. So I would suggest to Cut this thing open eh, and see how it looks inside. Eh? Ooh, we see already a big, a lot of stuff there. Yeah. So let's analyze it. Let's analyze the function like before. So here's the one connector. Eh? Here's the one connector. This is connected to this area. Here, this is sealed. There is nothing much going on. Yeah. So one is blocked right now. Here the two connector, which is this, this connector here. This is here connected to this area. This area can air can pass here and is connected to the three. So two and three are connected. So this is now uh, the rest position since the spring is, is not loaded uh, without tension. This is the rest position. So it means yeah block rest position. If we apply air here at the 1-2 connector, uh, if, we, if we add air at this, there is a piston, this piston will start to move down. Okay? If this piston is moving down somewhere in the middle, uh, look what is happening. One is now connected because here is open, almost open, now it's open. Yeah. One is now connected to two, yeah. but two is still connected to three because here we, are st we still have a gap. Yeah. So there is still a gap. So right now all connections are interconnected simply to each other. Yeah. So this means this is a valve which does not with overlapping. Yeah. So this is with overlapping. However, the switching is going very fast, so we will reach then this position. Yeah? We reach this position. Now this here is sealed. You see, this pressed really down. So only one and two are connected now. Now we're in flow position. Yeah? Once we release the pressure here on the one-two side, the spring will unload. This will go up somewhere in the middle. We have again the situation where we connect all things to each other yeah? and if it move it further here this will press will be pressed here and we are sealed one and two is again sealed and two and three is opened yeah? so this is a pneumatically operated valve this is a pneumatically operated valve three two way valve and Oh, with overlapping. Okay, so now this little tiny hole, yeah, this is also important. You see, there is there is space under, around this cylinder, there is a little bit space. So, and if we're going to switch, tuck, yeah, we have to get rid of the air. Okay, we have to get rid of the air. So, if it's switched, this little hole is for the exhaust air simply, yeah, for the air to get rid of. If we're moving up, this is now the second position, there must be air sucked back in. Otherwise, I could not switch. One really important thing is that this area here, where the pressure is applied from the 1-2 interface, this must be bigger than the area of the 1 interface. Because if we assume we have two pressures which are equal, yeah, we need to 
have a higher force to the downward side, yeah, because I need to open it. So I need a higher force, so the area of the piston must be bigger than the area of the, of the seal, which is held by, by connector number one. Yeah? This is why those two dishes do have different sizes. So this is how this looks inside, okay? This is how this looks inside. Let's have a few on the, on the uh, symbol. Yeah? Let's try to, to produce a symbol for this, for this one. Yeah? So we said we have a 3-2-way valve in lock rest position. Yeah? So let's draw it. Two positions, rest position here, lock rest position, so here we have the one connector, here we have the three connector and here we have the two connector. On one side it's spring loaded and on the other side it's pneumatically operated and the second switch thingy looks like this, the second switch position, so this means if I put pressure here, one and two will get interconnected, so this is the one, two connector. Okay. This is the symbol of exactly that valve. We cannot see if this is if this is uh, with overlapping or without overlapping. The symbol without overlapping would look exactly the same. Sometimes Sometimes we do have, in, in catalogs and so on, we do have this symbol, yeah? there is the dotted, these are the two stable symbols, yeah? so here we have one, we have three, we have two. Yeah? Now what is this? Yeah. This is the intermediate. This is the intermediate state when switching. Yeah. So here we are all have interconnected. Yeah. But we usually don't draw it. This is in catalogs and so on at manufacturers. If you want to purchase a valve, then it's important for you to know if this is with overlapping like this or without overlapping, without overlapping, it there would every be everywhere be this T sign. Yeah? So all all are blocked. This is the symbol of this valve here. Okay. Yeah. Operated, a pneumatically operated valve. Next time we're still going to talk about pneumatically operate, operated valves. Yeah? However, we do have a little trick to reduce the, the operational forces. So it's a pneumatically operated, mechanically switched valve then next time. How this is working and why we do this. And what is the symbol then about this, we will see next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.